Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Independence, I welcome each of you in attendance to this Tuesday, August 27th meeting of the Independence Planning Commission. Before we begin our meeting, uh, let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For those of you who are unfamiliar with our meetings, it is a responsibility of this commission to hold public hearings and make recommendations to the Independent City Council on matters relating to zoning and land use changes within our city. We also consider and make decisions on plats, special use permits, and other issues, as well as changes in codes and policies that relate to city planning. Our procedure for each case will be as follows. First, the applicant of each of the case will be recognized to speak on behalf of their case, followed by anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak in favor of the matter. Then it will be opened up for those who are in opposition or who simply have questions regarding the case. If there is opposition or questions from the public, then the applicant will be called back up to the microphone and allowed a rebuttal period to address those concerns or answer those questions. Once the applicant is finished, the chair, me, will declare the public hearing portion of the case closed and then further comment from the public will not be recognized. At this point, the commissioners will have the opportunity to discuss the merits of the case with one another and during the discussion, the commission reserves the right to ask questions of all parties concerned. And then finally, we'll re render a decision on the case. Before we begin each case tonight, we will ask anyone who wishes to speak on behalf of that case, whether they're in opposition or whether they have questions or approval, to be sworn in. The first item in our agenda is the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? I don't. <laughs> it's for case 19-320-04, final plan. Yes. I move to approve case number 19-320-04, final plat, Rahasi Vale, P. Pud, 17th Platt. Thank you. You're welcome. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. If there's no discussion, we'll proceed to the vote. Commissioner Ferguson? Yes. Commissioner Preston? Yes. Commissioner Wiley? Yes. Commissioner McLean? Yes. Commissioner Yes. Case number 19-320-04, final plat, Varese, 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 Vale, PUD, 17th plat, has been approved. Now we're coming to our next case, number 19-100-09, rezoning for 9701 East 35th Street. Whoever is here that thinks they may speak on this case, whether they're simply thinking about it or whether they know they are, we'd ask for you to stand and raise your right hand and be sworn in. That includes the applicant. That includes the applicant. Those who standing, do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. Thank you, you may be seated. Okay, would the city give the report, please? The applicant, John Jarvis, seeks to rezone a 4.78 acre former school site located at 9701 East 35th Street South from R18 PUD, that's Moderate Density Planned Unit Development, to C3 Service Commercial for a mini storage facility. So as you can see here, um, 
from the uh, vicinity map on the right side of the slide. It's uh, where uh, basically where East 35th Terrace intersects with US 40 Highway. It's the area north of that going up to uh, the intersection of 35th and uh, South Evanston Avenue. You can see the surrounding zonings of this large piece of property was that was a former elementary school site um, to the north you've got a large area of single-family homes uh, zoned r6 to the south you've got commercial along the 40 highway corridor and um, a little bit of r6 there uh, to the east um, two-family residential and single-family residential zoned properties and to the west um, uh, property zone does uh, service commercial as well as a single family up there in the northwest uh, the city's future land use plan uh, designates this site for a neighborhood uh, a residential neighborhood use uh, rezoning to a c district um, Um, would be contrary to the plan as you can see here it's envisioned to be uh, used for uh, residential purposes this is a vicinity map aerial photo of the neighborhood you can see the old school site there in the in the parking lots and what's remains of the of the school bus driveway there up by 35th Street um, you see single-family homes there on the east um, across 35th Street to the north um, a large uh, area of C3 to the west that was developed uh, recently for a trucking business that is no longer there and then um, a dog groomer and a uh, um, automotive repair facility there to the south across East 35th Terrace uh, this slide shows the layout of the mini storage facility or the proposed mini storage facility the site would be dominated by 76,590 um, square feet of, of structure plus uh, a lot of paved surface as well there would be a detention basin southwest of the office which is that larger building on the southeast on the drawing the detention area and the per, uh, the periphery around this property um, around this track um, adjacent to the back walls of um, some of these uh, storage facilities would be the only green space that would be on the property although they have sufficient setback for the required 15 foot um, they would, um, 15 foot buffer for screening for surrounding neighborhoods and would be required to um, provide the um, accompanying landscaping and fencing that would be necessary for that use um, then this thing shows two accesses uh, the primary access would be from the south from the commercial corridor of 40 highway um, to right adjacent there to the office where you could have um, adjacent uh, parking as well um, the north entrance shown on here would not be used uh, by the public and could be fenced off for just um, emergency vehicle purposes okay um, real quickly I'll go through some of the photos for you uh, this is on the south end of the property we're looking southwest toward uh, 40 highway um, the dog groomer facility right there on our left this is looking toward the east on uh, 35th Terrace you can see the uh, the automotive repair uh, business there continues on to a single-family residential neighborhood there to the east this is um, to the northeast um, 
looking onto the site. Um, and this is up, walking up over that hill, looking northeast toward 35th Street and the neighborhoods to the northeast. And this is more to the northwest. This is on 35th Street in front of the old school site, looking west toward 40 Highway. And then this is looking down uh, 35th Street to the east, back toward Sterling. Um, and you can see the neighborhoods there that lie along this corridor. And this is Evanston directly across from the property due north. And this is looking south into the property. And deeper into the property, what's left of the paved surfaces. Given the request is contrary to the comprehensive plan's intention to minimize uh, commercial stripping along the city's main corridors, and that C3 zoning allows uh, many uses that might not be appropriate to the site that's adjacent to residential uses, uh, staff does not recommend approval of this request. And I'm ready to take any questions you may have. Sure. Anyone have questions of uh, Brian? Given the size of the proposed project, and it's adjacent to, as I recognize that not less than four, three, three or four residents, what was the staff's uh, study in terms of economic impact, in terms of property value of the homeowners? We we don't we normally don't look into those issues, but I'm sure then the applicant will have that information, right. and I'll I'll defer. Okay. Does anyone else have questions of city staff? Okay. Would the applicant please come forward? Make sure that you each of you state your name and address for the record, please, <laughs> and make sure you talk directly in the microphone. Yeah. Uh, Luke Moore, 730 West 133rd Street, um, Suite 200, Olson. Um, I am the applicant of John Jarvis, and um, or supporting him, I guess that is. So Brian, thank you for um, giving a good presentation on our, on our site. I would like to point out a few other things as well. Um, along with this proposed self-storage, um, you mentioned that a majority of the site is going to be um, surrounded by storage units that is there's going to be a wall on the outside however that wall you will not be able to see into the property it'll be a nice stucco wall with a, a lot of landscaping surrounding the entire perimeter of it um, along with that there'll be um, sidewalks that are now going to be added so that we can get down to US 40 highway that is um, and I guess uh, we, we kind of want to um, let everyone know that there there is current C3 C2 zoning around the area um, when we met with uh, city staff, we were um, informed that this was probably the best option is to, is to get it zoned that way. Um, but um, John, if you want to add anything, you can. But I felt like we we've done we've done a lot of stuff in order to a lot of requirements we've met in order to maintain this um, to get it to be a C three zoning that is. So, I'm John Jarvis. Um, I live in Sugar Creek. Did you say I state my address? Yes, please. Uh, 11420 Putnam, Sugar Creek, Missouri. I'm a general contractor. I build stuff all over. I like to build stuff. I've been trying to build storage units for a long time. I've been looking at, actually was kind of turned onto this property by a couple other builders in this area or developers who have said this has kind of fallen through on other things they wanted to do. Uh, and as I found out from our neighborhood meeting, I guess they wanted to do maybe apartments or this or that. I, I don't really know because they asked me a bunch of questions, but I can see why these guys had turned me on to this property because they felt like it fit me perfect. And then we went in front of the city and their staff or whoever and asked questions. You know, I never would have proceeded to this point had I known it was going to come up as a 
uh, an opposed view, and I just got told about it seven hours ago. And so I've spent a lot of my hard-earned money on stuff that I thought was going to be the best thing. I had a neighborhood meeting. I had people come up that were opposed to this, but I actually talked to them and, and uh, you know, talked out many of the things. This, the way this property is structured, you can't tell from this picture, but it's a two-tier thing. And once we put the surrounding wall around it that can be built as beautiful as they'd like, it can look like the Taj Mahal, but you really can't see into this thing like a normal storage unit. Like when you roll into a town, you see a... 50,000 doors of storage units. This one's pretty self-contained, that's why I like it. And I'm just kind of astounded at what happened today because I've put three, four months into this and I have a, I'm contingent on a contract based today that I was told would be all figured out and then I was just told seven hours ago, oh, by the way, we oppose this. And yeah, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. And, and also, I don't, I'm not really sure what the problem is with the staff or whoever. Maybe it's the way you guys have it zoned out, but this is literally the best thing. And when I read the review, I think it's not being taken the correct way. I think the way it should be taken is here's a perfectly good neighborhood with people all around that all need a third car garage to put all their stuff in and stuff. Because the, the neighbor gal that's right there, Shalanda on the west, She's like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. I need a place to put my storage. Everybody needs a place to put their storage. So I just don't see what the problem is, and I would like to be able to work out something or if we could have another meeting or let you guys ask whatever questions you want because I just don't understand how we got to this point when I asked in the beginning if this is something everybody would be happy with. Um, well, we could certainly postpone it till next time if that's what you're asking for well I'm, I'm not sure Chair. I mean I if it needs to just go to the City Council or this I'm not sure why it got pushed back as a a negative thing when for the last three and a half months I was on well the, let, I'll tell you what let's Mr. let's Chair. proceed and keep that in mind unless I would recommend that the applicant proceed with this presentation focus less on the recommendations of staff and more on the attributes of his project okay that's excellent that's excellent taken idea. yeah so thank you for sharing that with us but I think I, I have a couple questions about um, you know the wall you mentioned do you are there any renderings or any thing that you can I mean I know I understand it's a stucco wall well but I mean, you know how tall is it um, we plan on building an eight at least eight foot wall around the entire property because if you you can't see it in these pictures but it's a two-tier platform and the way it is if you just back up storage units walls around the entire property, sorry, you really can't see into this entire thing. And we can build it, you know, like you would a facade on any fancy building, whatever, whatever makes the city happy is what I'm saying. But you really can't see into this thing once it's built. I, I believe what John um, also, a lot of the storage units you guys have around the area have maybe a fence or that you could see through at times where this one you're not going to be able to see through whatsoever along with that i mentioned there'll be landscaping around the perimeter along with security gates at both entrances security gates meaning that we're going to have to get access before we can just drive into this place so this but this drawing we have does not show that is that the correct the security well, gates that no, was no, a very the, conceptual the, the, site plan the wall there was a mention of sidewalks. We don't have a, correct, no. Okay. So you're willing to sacrifice some of the storage units? Or are you going to have to sacrifice some of the area you have of storage units to do what you're talking about doing? A wall around the perimeter? A little, a little bit. Yeah. Correct, on the outside. Because that was one of my questions too. How, Could, is this like you have to build it out like this to make it worth your while doing? Absolutely Well, that's not. the best. For the obviously the maximum amount of numbers that's the best sequence and making it the prettiest on the outside for the city you sure know. Okay. I'm, I'm doing the perimeter wall because to take away from any looks that look shabby you know we would still be able to have the storage against that wall is that correct their units yeah. yeah what i was you know some some uh developer might be reluctant to sacrifice any more area because he's got it figured out that he needs exactly this much area <laughs> to make it worth his while economically and then but you know cause um, what you're proposing and what it may come down to is whether you're wanting to sacrifice some of that storage space to make it look pretty 
I think we already have it figured in, though. Okay. That's, Mr. that's what I was asking. Mr. Chairman, yes. plus the proper just to remind everybody, you're only approving the rezoning here, uh, not the site plan. I know. Uh, don't get caught up too much in the details of the site plan because it could change next week. So you're approving the rezoning and not in the details of the site plan as presented by the applicant. Well, but I have to determine what the applicant might be willing to do if I'm going to approve or But that has no bearing plan. on the final right. results of what's built. I know that. Oh, correct. Thanks. And I would, if I would like, <laughs> sorry. just to add maybe as well, um, if we're concerned with the, the zoning itself, um, a possibility would be the next time I think, uh, Brian, I think you mentioned that in case, let's say, John's project weren't to go, th right, wasn't going to go through for some reason and he were to sell the property and now that it's zoned C3, right, you'd be concerned about possibly something else going into that place. Um, I know there's no such thing as a stipulation um, on zoning, that is, but if we were to um, possibly maybe have another, um, another way around the next, if, if you were to ever sell it, which you don't plan on doing, but if you were to ever get rid of it and somebody else were to come in, that they would have to come through it, the same process we had to. Right. Planning commission, sorry, planning commission to get that uh, site plan approved and kind of go on from there. I'm just throwing out any well, ideas. We're willing to work with. Well, like Stuart said, we would only approve or, or not either recommend or not recommend whether the site plan, where the, not the site plan, but the zoning. But we're curious and we're asking questions, which I think we're allowed to do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. So the only other question I had at the moment was uh, lighting and if this lighting was going to be on for a long time, which goes to the quality of the residential neighborhood, correct? This okay. place will be top notch, full security, full lighting, everything that falls not just under the storage unit guidelines for Missouri and the state wise up, but even more so because technologies is wide and we want it as sure. white and bright as it can be, but also the way we have it structured, you won't, re won't really be able to, it won't be like some stadium shining, you know, because of all the lights, because it's all contained in the inside. Yeah, because that would affect the correct. residential. We have a good lighting plan. It's just, like he said, we're still in the, the, beginning stages which we thought was a go-ahead and we have it all it's just we're working on other stuff but it, it mm -hmm. could all be done but absolutely top-notch is what i want okay all right does anyone else have questions of the applicant before they okay thank you gentlemen you take a seat is there anyone else here who is in favor of this case? Is there anyone here who is opposed or who has questions? And I know at least one person to get sworn in, but we can take care of that if you come up and speak. So whoever gains access first can come up and, all right. She wasn't sworn in. All right. All right. Well, Wilter gonna take care of that right now. So come on up. Uh, before I swear you in, just state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Lauren Coyne, 3415 South Overton Avenue. Okay, Independent Lauren. 64052. Thank you. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer. I do. I do. Okay, thank you. Go ahead with what um, you want to say. My only concern is that, um, like, the governor just came a few weeks ago and told her all this new stuff about the Independent School District, and we have a brand new school over there, and... It really just seems like two steps backwards to put some kind of large business in where we just spent $10 million on this brand new state of the art school. And I really feel like um, it would be a better interest as if we could get some sort of residential. I know that's just a hope and dream. Um, but you know, you want to get younger families in over here where this brand new pretty school is. Um, but I don't feel like putting in a, a storage unit is necessarily a plus not that it I you know I'm still on the fence about it you know what it could end up um, but it really just feels like from my perspective as a parent you know like we want more younger families coming in especially over in the western end of independence you know and it just really concerns me that that's 
and that might be a deterrent instead of, you know, because you have a lot of elderly people on that side of town where I do see more younger families and, oh, there's more kids riding their bikes and there's more, you know, of all that kind of thing. But, like, when those homes go up for sale, is that going to be, you know, there's still a reasonable price where younger families can get a start and, and that sort of thing. That's why we moved over there and we just stayed because we liked it, you know, and everything's just kind of snowballed and the way independence is going, I, I'm proud, you know, of the schools and all the amazing things that they're, you know, all that kind of stuff as far as like my children's education, I don't want to move, but something like this makes me really go, well, maybe I do want to move, you know what I mean? It just isn't something that entices me. I feel like it's something that kind of deters me. Sure. And that's just my kind of only concern. Okay. I just wanted to get that put out there. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Is there, uh, is there anyone else who'd like to speak, please? Okay. All right. Have a seat. Okay. I've been sworn in. Yes, great. Yes. I just need you to state your name and your address for the record, please. Uh, Kathy Klein, 3402 South Theater Avenue. Thank you, ma'am. And I did respect this last lady's, what she said, but I'm afraid I'm part of that older generation that, that she commented about. My main concern is I don't really understand rezoning that well. And I know it was sort of hinted at that people are afraid that it is going to uh, be for commercial or mini storage for these units. And then if they sell, it can go into something else. Now, if, if I understood that, that it could go into something else. Uh, I thought about low income housing and that brings, I can't say more crime up because I haven't proved that out yet, but I do know that you get the poorer quality or poorer individuals, lower income people, there is uh, usually more theft, more crime, more things. I already had my car broken into just the other night. Uh, the, the neighbor lady had hers broken into the week before, and I've had two vehicles stolen while I've been there. I do not want to lower our standards any far further than we already have. Uh, like I said, I'm a, a senior citizen. I live by myself. I even hesitate telling people that. Uh, because of knowing that I am, you know, then more susceptible to somebody coming into my home. Sure. So, uh, so I'm concerned about if this, if this is rezoned for mini storage, and if that doesn't work out, then will we have to have a meeting again if they want to rezone it for uh, low-income housing? Or is it already set up that it can go into low-income housing because this says commercial or mini storage? And low-income housing, to my thought, would be commercial. And I, I just need an answer to that, I guess, is why I'm here in front of the okay. council. Well, why don't we, uh, I'll write that question down and I'll make sure that it gets answered for you. I'd okay? appreciate that because I want to know what's what's going on in my neighborhood and I sure. and I want to make sure that I don't encourage the the storage then for them to back out and end up getting a housing unit in there that a lot of us are not going to want because there's quite a few senior citizens there are children yes but there are senior citizens there in that neighborhood too okay thank, thank you, you. ma'am yes okay is there another uh is another person that'd like to come forward and Okay. As he's coming forward, if you want to speak, that's fine. You'll have to wait till after he's done. Okay. And then if you want to do that, just approach the microphone and I'll tell you what to do after that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, make sure you state your name and address for the record, please. Mark Thomason, 9516 East US Highway 40. Thank you, Mark. I probably have over 30% property line around there. Uh, if you'll look at the map here, I, I, by the way, thank you for my City of Independence Award three years ago for the beautification award. I spent a lot of money and time and effort in there. 
I probably spent over $900,000 on that land that's attached to that to, to improve residential. And as you can see from the pictures, I, I kind of overbuilt for the neighborhood. But since then, I started that in 2013, a lot of other places up and down 40 Highway have improved their properties. And, you know, if we all continue down the same path, when people come into town like they do for the ball games and stuff, that's generally their first little stripe of land they go down on Independence. So, and I get a lot of comments on the property, but I would like to, I would take it a terrible hit financially if, if that would go in next door to me, I think, without any question. Um, I'm more worried about, when I asked how long they would be open, they said 24 seven. That's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be noise all the time. Um, with 400 and something units, people will be banging around up there around the clock. And they got residents on three sides. I don't think that's a positive thing for independence. Um, I, I know something that needs to be up there, and I, I'm definitely pro-business, and I love walls, I'm, I'm about it, but, but uh, that's just not the spot, so I, I don't think. And um, uh, now, if I'm not, if I understand correctly, the first 200 feet off of the highway is commercial already, is that, isn't that correct? On L of 40 Highway. Am I right? I'm not. First 200 feet? I'm not sure that it is, but we can not, find out. Not in this location. Well, it's, it's not on, it should be on, on all of 40 Highway, as I understood. When I was there, there may have been at one time that was the case. And you can see remnants of that okay. um, looking at uh, other properties nearby mm -hmm. to the west. And there to the, that's why you have that little wedge of R6 that's, that's south of uh, 35th Terrace. And, and what you have there to the northwest. But um, that, that was the old pattern. But the new pattern is that z we have one zoning per property. And um, when things get rezoned, they're rezoned to one zoning per lot. So you couldn't divide that into the first 200 foot of commercial? Well, you, we, well if, you were gonna, if you were gonna rezone if you were going to zone this property different porches of a different zonings then you would need to plat it into separate properties and have those separate properties have the separate zonings okay. well the entry points i was concerned with too um 35th street entry off of the back 35th street that runs across town i don't have my map from here now I'll give, them, I'll give them all the way but uh oh, thank you Anyway, the 35th Street um, entry point is, is kind of a crest of the hill back there. And there's a lot of people race down that all the time down 35th Street. If, if there was a light there or something, it might work. But without it, I think it'd be pretty dangerous. And um, the, um, uh, now I'm talking on the, the, the 35th Street back here, okay? Yes, sir. Not here. This, is, this yes, area here would be, it shouldn't hurt anything, okay? But um, I think it'd be dangerous in some respects without a, some kind of way to stop the traffic or slow it down because, you know, I watch, I watch them race down through there every day. But, uh, but just as a whole, um, I think the property needs to be in two pieces because everything else up and down that highway has got the first little 200 feet of it's commercial on, on the Kansas City side anyway. And I thought it was on our side. But anyway, that's pretty much what I have to say. Thank you very much, yeah, sir. Appreciate you. it. Is there another person that has questions or would like to speak in opposition to this case? We can wait. Just take your time. Okay, now you were not sworn in, correct? What? You were not sworn in? No. Okay. Could you pull the microphone down? <laughs> Great. Uh, to speak, I have to, I have to swear you in. All right. Could you first give me your name and address, please? Uh, Dolores, D-O-L-O-R-E-S-L-C-C, -E KISS, and two E's, K-I-S-S-E-E. -S -S -E. Okay, thank you, Dolores. Let me swear you in. You just have to raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Thank you, ma'am. Go ahead with your question and or comment. Well, I'm kind of flustered with this. I live at uh, 9720 East 35th Terrace, okay. which they mm -hmm. takes us in. Now, across the street used to be our park. Uh, it was sold, I presume, by the city to these people. And um, he's been trying to get something done over there all the time, and then we get this. Since he hasn't been able to do anything with us, uh, he's going around about applying for rezoning, stating the street, be uh, the street behind me, which includes us. That covers our whole thing. We've been, all of us have lived there 25, 30 some years and uh, pretty quiet, but we're one block off of 40, 40 Highway, but we're still a very quiet community. And we sure don't want to have a bunch of trucks and outside people coming in that we don't know, bringing in what we don't know. We don't know what they put in the storage units. We have no way of knowing. And I, I just think it's really unfair, and I think it's unfair for all of us that have lived there that long for them to do this. Okay. okay. Is that, is, do you have anything else? Thank you. Well, you're welcome, ma'am. Thank you for speaking. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak in or has questions? That's okay. You can come. And you, you also came in a little later, correct? So yeah. I need to swear you in. Okay. Uh, uh, again, just make sure you speak into the microphone and right. let let me have your name and your address, please. Dolores Turnbow, uh, ninety-seven twenty East Thirty-fifth Terrace South. Okay. Independence, Missouri, 64052. Okay, thank you. Would you please raise your right hand? Okay. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> sure. Well, this will be short. Do you solemnly swear to tell the whole truth before this commission? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Okay, thank you. Go ahead with your question and or comment. Okay. So... You're planning to rezone, is that correct? That's what they're wanting to do, yes. And put in, we got the letter of storage units. That's what their intent is, yes, if they get the rezoning. It's a residential area that we live in. We don't need any more traffic and crime going through our neighborhood. Last night, the police were across the street at the apartment complex. And is, what else are they planning to do? Just the storage units? That's, that's all that I know about right now. How can a residential area become <clears throat> a commercial area? Well, by going through this process <laughs> and having folks agree with them. But, um, I, but I, I understand your point. I think it's because part of it's kind of butts up to 40 Highway and the other part goes back. It's a big lot. So, you know, some people, they own the property. So they're Yeah, I, I live with Dolores Cassi, my mother. Mm-hmm taking care of each other there Good. and our neighbors Good. and things and, and we really don't need that kind of traffic okay or storage units i mean isn't there a different place to build storage units well we have there may be but 
that's where they want to do this. So that's why we're here. Well, tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I totally disagree with it. Okay, so you're against. Absolutely. Okay. Any other questions or anything to add? Well, within see. reason. <laughs> what happens to the homes when you rezone? Well, the homes stay there because they can only build on that property if well, if approved. What about our uh, taxes? on our homes. Oh, I'm sure you'll still be paying those. Don't want to. <laughs> I don't know if they will go up or down. I, I really don't know. But they might probably uh, go up. Th that's what I was thinking, that they would go up. Well, I mean, they always go up. They never go down. <laughs> right. Well, do something. <laughs> well, that's not, our, that's not in our purview. I wish I could. <laughs> I really wish I could. Mm. So. But no. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, is that, is well, that all you got to say? Do, do you know if they have anything else in mind? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not clairvoyant, but uh, that's all they want to do, and that's all they're proposing to do right now. But they have to, before they do it, they have to get the zoning approved. They can't just do it without doing that, so that's why we're here. And up to 30% of us have to disagree with it. Is that correct? Uh, no, no, no. That's what we, we'll either vote to approve or disapprove. And our vote is the only thing that counts. But it does go on to council, yeah. city council? That's correct. OK, so this is just like a recommendation to city council. They're the ones that they're elected. They're the we're just volunteers. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're the ones that elected. They're the ones that will make the final decision. So that would probably be who you really need to speak to is your is councilman. Your councilman. The councilman. Yeah, these are this is a these are city staff workers. The council meets on Mondays, or you can call the mayor and talk to her. No and problem. Give your opinion. No problem. Okay. Because it's just, there's still kids in the neighborhood and stuff. We don't okay. need traffic. Well, nobody does. But. At all. Okay. And, you know, there's elderly people. Right. That take walks up and down the street. Both streets, you know. Even up to, I've walked clear up 40 highway sometimes so well, I'm we sure we'll take that into consideration but, but the final says, decision is with the City Council and it says on there and other activities on the paper we received um, I have no idea <laughs> what we're trying to find out I, what that means it, it was on the applicant's mailing that they sent out, so I'm not sure what she's referring to. I'll tell you what, we'll find out about that, okay? okay? We'll find out before we're done here, we'll find out. Okay. All right? Okay, and I know there was one more thing, but she has the paper. So, oh. Um. Construction, site grading, paving, utilities, and associated activities located within the permit project area to facilitate construction of a new self storage complex. 428 units is what I have. Okay, well, that's what they might do if the zoning is approved. Applicant uh, John Jarvis. Okay. That's what they might do. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's just telling you what might happen if everything's approved. Okay, and the next meeting is October 7th, City Council. Is yes, that correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Like I said, we're just either recommending or not recommending, and it, the final decision is with the city council. I disagree with this happening. We don't need storage units there. Okay. Well, we appreciate that comment. Thank you very much. What? Is there any? May I get to come up with one more time for a minute? You've got two minutes. Brief comment will be allowed. Still still trying to for a little hot air here. No. <laughs> okay. Get to the thing. Uh, we were talking about, you know, where they build. Make all sure you talk into the microphone, please. Oops. Where they Thank build you. and all this and what they're asking for. Well, they have a place over on uh, Blue Ridge Boulevard and 23rd. They're they work with the people that own that AA plus one 2401 Blue Ridge Boulevard, and they have a place in there. And then he rented it. I have to say this because I'm really mad. Their office rented a house or bought the house next to the um, park. park moved in it was ready to move in my friends sold the house all you had to do was you know pack your bags well that's what they've done they make believe that they live there and we just kind of resent that too they moved in and opened their office is what they did and we know that because they have their uh once a month meeting or so and it contains about 12 or more cars lined up across the street from us and across the park. And they just keep buying. Now they are in, they are in business with the people off, off of uh, Blue Ridge Boulevard, and we know this. And then I check them out because I know this. But I don't like being hoodwinked by a bunch of outsiders from the north <laughs> okay <laughs> okay, okay. but um, you know i mean i met him briefly right. and he was very rude and i tried to ask him uh what um what they were guy. going to do and he blew me off and i said well i guess i have to go to the council he said well i've already done that and he just turned his back on me and walked off and continued doing what he was doing so i thought hm, okay for you you know okay but well, thank you. you. They're not reasonable people. Thanks, thanks for that comment. You're, you've had two and a half minutes. I was I generous. I thank you. But when I get angry with it, it's better just to spit it out. And that <laughs> man, I don't know. Okay, we'll consider it spat out. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who has comments or questions? Is any or I know. Hello, make sure you state your name and address for the record, please. I'm Ruth Myers. I live at ninety eight oh seven East thirty fifth Street, about five doors from where they're wanting to put this. Okay. Um, I am not in favor of rezoning our neighborhood. Um, I know we have a lot of commercial uh, businesses that are on 40 Highway, and, and, they're, and that's, that's enough noise. And if there is uh, an accident on I-70 during any of the rush hours, 35th Street becomes another highway already. So I don't think we need to rezone for something that's going to add more traffic to our neighborhood. So I'm, I'm just pretty much in agreement with most of the ones that spoke here tonight about the rezoning. I don't think it's what our neighborhood needs or should have. Okay. Um, that's about all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate your participation. Is there anyone else here who has questions or is against? 
Okay. Um, would the applicant like to come up and respond to or answer questions? So I, I guess to start this off, um, um, the two ladies, I'm not sure where they were comparing the right applicant. Um, those properties, none of those John actually owns. So I just thought I'd, I'd get that out there. Um, okay. As for uh, some of the other concerns, um, I know, um, like John mentioned earlier, this was currently um, a couple other ideas have gone into place with apartment complexes or senior living or such. Um, with that type of um, projects going in here, that would be the problem. I mean, that, that would increase your, your traffic flow tremendously. It would increase um, crime possibility with more people in the area. Um, and with, with this self-storage, this is a very low volume ordeal here. I mean, there, you, this isn't going to be, like I said, an apartment or even um, a trucking or any, any type of business that's going to have a lot more people there. It's very come and go as you please type of deal. Um, along with that, um, currently we've, we've talked, we had a neighborhood meeting and a lot of the neighbors talked about uh, the homeless that actually live on the property. Um, with this, we would help out with the homeless. Obviously, there would be no room for people to be sleeping on in the area, possibly crime in the area. This is going to help. John mentioned earlier about the security cameras that's going to take place, security fence, um, the lighting. Um, we'd help. We would hope that would help the area as well. So I thought I'd just go ahead and mention that. And John, you can go ahead. If I could just state one more time to the two kind ladies, I'm not whoever it is you thought you were talking about because this is my first venture with this piece of property. I have no other business, whatever. I'm a general contractor. I live in Sugar Creek. I have no other businesses over there. And I'm sorry for whatever. And my full 100% intention is to build this storage unit full and not sell, build anything else. And that was one of the main issues with some of the other people we met at the neighborhood meeting who happened to be, a, I remember a guy, he used to drive dump trucks for me and, and his wife's concerns were, I don't want you know this and I don't want that or car dealership. And I'm, I'm saying 100%, I've spent my entire life trying to get to this point for this thing I'm trying to build on my storage units. And I apologize for what you got going on that you had someone else. Secondly is, the, the, the traffic will be nil compared to what it is now because there's two things. That's fire department procedure. You have to, if you have an adjacent street on the back side, you have to have an opening closing. That's not me. But I absolutely want one on the back, but the main entrance is on the front, and that's where the property and all the traffic will be, right there at the front at a 40 highway where the other C3s are. And as far as the, the, the th some of the other concerns that they had, I'm trying to create revenue for independence and this thing can't be built out. I've had other investors tell me they're trying to do what you guys want in the, the residential, but nobody can do it. So it's just setting, doing nothing. And like he said, there's homeless people and stuff on it. And also, this is only the rezoning meeting for this piece of property. This isn't, I mean, I understand it could affect taxes and this and that. and if. If it looks like a whatever, I understand that can affect your property, but we're only dealing with the rezoning of this property that I'm trying to purchase, correct? Correct. I think some of them had some misunderstandings or something. Uh, I'm not sure what else to say. That my total intention is to build a storage unit. I think it's a great thing. I was told in the beginning by staff this was a great thing, and I don't even know how we got to this point of any deposing but I understand people in the neighborhood want to say stuff and I appreciate that and respect everything they had to say because me too but we're gonna run a top-notch thing here there's not gonna be any anything that's gonna detour from the neighborhood period so and I don't plan on selling and building high-rises or something else so that's all I have to say and thank you okay thank you very much Question. yes I need not say it. I need not say it, but it's rather obvious this project is not received well by the current residents. Sometimes it's necessary to modify plans. Have you considered the comments of uh, Mr. Mark Thomas, the potential of replatting, providing some six, seven, 
residential properties along 35th reduce absolutely the not <laughs> I have no intentions for any of that kind of stuff it's not gonna work there there's nothing to be made I'm doing this to make money and to build storage units that's it thank you very much yeah. Wait. N nope. Everybody had an opportunity to speak. And I understand that things happen and you think of other things, but that time has passed, unfortunately, for some folks. So what I'm going to do right now is, thank you. I'm going to close the public portion of the hearing and uh, ask the commissioners if they have any comments or questions before a motion is made. I have a brain moment. What is our independence vision called? Is it reimagine? What is it? Our comprehensive plan. It has a name. Which is not all yeah, that vi relevant. Vision 2040, yes. Okay. That was just for me, thank you. So the comprehensive plan, we, you don't like this idea because it doesn't really go along with the plans for independence in general, the 40 highway specific. I mean, it just doesn't. The, the issue is that? that if you go back to the vision, you can see the, the little red over there by Blue Ridge Cutoff. The idea is that the plan would, we, that we move away from having stripped out commercial corridors and that we'd have more nodal where the commercial in the city is around major intersections and clusters. And that's one of the features of this plan. Okay. And that's to what, to what I was referring to in the staff report. Okay, that helps. Thank you. Well, it sort of helps. I mean, you're wanting that to be residential, which means that this property and the other two properties on either side of it have to become residential, correct? I mean, the or it all becomes commercial yeah. <laughs> to be a node, right? So I mean, for, I'm, yeah, I'm just saying that I'm not blaming. Yeah, over anybody. time, I'm just the, the, that over out time, there. the vision is yeah that some of that commercial may turn into some sort of multi-family maybe along the highway or something or some sort of other residential use and that we would eliminate these these strings of development like Nolan Road and quit replicating those over and over and over through the city and start clustering our our development around major intersections okay one of my questions is, he mentioned that he didn't know until seven hours ago that this was not going to be approved. So what's the, what's the common procedure for, or is there any common procedure for letting somebody know if they're going to be received favorably or unfavorably by the city? Correction. He didn't know until seven hours ago that staff would not recommend the approval or recommendations of this commission is still to speak in the, the air. microphone mr preston <laughs> i was anxious okay well so you got the you got so that's my question generally um, what we do is we send out the staff report uh the week before um, um and uh there may have been a mix-up in the in the emailing and he may not have received it on time so Okay, but that usual procedure is to the usual notify procedure is a week no, ahead of within <laughs> the the packets go out on Friday, and um, I believe they go out on Friday. So it's about a week before we we have um, the uh, the the proposed or the uh, um, recommendation of the staff on that report. Okay. So I'm just asking, Stuart, because I know you're looking at me. Um, so we either vote, we either vote to recommend or not. Or what happens if he wants to have more time and reconsider? 
and come back to staff and find and because he's even proposing to do things differently than what's on our thing here um, so what I'm asking is I don't know that I'm in a position right or want to take a position of recommend or not recommend until again we have more information I hate zoning without all the information it's just frustrating yes sir so the I'm applicant has made it clear about what his intents are. He's steadfast in his presentation. Uh, staff has made a recommendation. We are not bound by the staff's recommendation. We have voted a number of times different from that. Therefore, I think uh, we have sufficient information to proceed with a vote. Well, we do, and we can. We have every right to. But I'm asking if the applicant, maybe I should just ask him directly. You want to go ahead and proceed with his vote? I would like to proceed. <coughs> I'm just trying to give you some time. Yeah, no, if you I, don't want any I, time, I would like fine. to proceed just because I'm already been in a, a three and a half month. Uh, con you know, I'm in with a bank telling them. I thought tonight's meeting was going to depend on whether I give them uh, a significant amount of money. And now, I, I, I mean, if it matter, if it makes a difference to make it work, absolutely, I'll do it. But if not, I would rather just go ahead and vote because, I mean, just like he said, my intentions are absolutely clear. There's nothing else going on here. I have no other plans, and that's what I want to do. Okay. And if, if there are recommendations, I mean, I, I was under the understanding that it was, everybody was for it in the beginning. And then we've been doing this for several months. That's, that was my, uh, I didn't understand how that seven hours ago I was just told that. Maybe I was sent the email earlier, but... I was under the uh, understanding that we had a that the city was for this for the last three and a half months, and I have monetary things I have to now deal with because of this. So I'd rather move on. That's fine. Thank There's you the for caveat to that, though. Is yeah. even no matter what our vote is, right? Yeah, it's got to go to the council. I mean, yeah. to go to council. So absolutely. Basically, so. all we're doing is betting. So I wouldn't. I would rather proceed forward, whatever okay. the fastest way possible. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, that having been said, do I have a motion? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I move that in the matter of case number 19-100-09 rezoning of R18 PUD to C3 at 9701 East 35th Street South be approved. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. Any further discussion or comments? Okay, let's proceed with the vote. Commissioner Ferguson? No. Commissioner Preston? No. Commissioner Wiley? No. Commissioner McLean? No. Chairman Ashbaugh? Abstain. Okay. The recommendation or unrecommendation will go forward to City Council next meeting, I believe, was September 7th. Is that right? After Memorial Day? Okay. Oh, October. I'm sorry. Okay. So that case is has been unre not recommended. Proceed to case number 19-125-01, rezoning for 2805 South Sterling. And as soon as uh, folks... Yeah, we could take a minute. Yeah, folks need to uh, leave so we can, uh, we can proceed with our meeting. Okay, uh, Cal Lowenson requests to rezone the property at 2805 South Sterling Avenue from R6, which is single family residential, to R18 PUD, which is medium density residential planned unit development, and approve a preliminary development plan. Uh, this is the, uh, the vicinity map. Uh, this is on the east, the site's on the east side of uh, uh, Sterling. South Sterling, just north of 29th Street. 
this is the rezoning for the area with the property in the oval. The properties to the north and the east are already zoned R18 PUD. Much of the area, much of this area is zoned R6 and R12 with some multifamily zonings to the northwest and southwest across Sterling. The future land use map shows neighborhood residential for the entire area, as you can see by the yellow. This is the aerial photo of the site with the, uh, uh, with the site obviously in the aerial, I mean in the oval. There's an apartment building to the north, a triplex to the east that faces Inglewood Terrace, and a single family home to the south. This is their site plan and uh, uh, well, basically their preliminary development plan. They show the, the building sitting between the two lots that make up this site. Uh, those lots will have to be replatted into a single parcel uh, to build the, this building as it faces the street. And then there on the lower right, you see the, how the uh, front of the building could look as far as being two stories and then having gr single garage doors on the lower story with a person uh, door next to that. Being this is uh, uh, just a triplex and not a entire development, the the, uh, the uh, preliminary development plan is uh, is uh, not incredibly detailed. Okay, the, here we're looking uh, east across Sterling into the site. From the street level, the property has a rise of about eight feet to the back. This is another view of the site showing one of the existing driveways. This is the single family home uh, directly south of the site. Uh, here these, uh, I'm sorry, here we're looking south down uh, Sterling Avenue. And these next three slides are uh, pictures of uh, the three or four houses that are dr directly across the street on the east, excuse me, the west side of Sterling. The houses here are about uh, six to eight feet below street level or street grade of South Sterling. If you've been along that area, you know that it comes down the hill and then goes. Okay, here we're going to, we're looking north on, uh, on we're looking north up Sterling Avenue. And then this is the apartment building directly to the south, excuse me, directly to the north of the south. I'm not sure how many units are in here. It's somewhere eight to ten units. And then the parking lot is in the rear of the uh, apartment building. Staff does recommend approval of this rezoning request and the accompanying preliminary development plan with the following conditions. The two lots must be replatted into a single parcel via the minor subdivision process prior to a building permit being issued for the site. Two is only one access point driveway onto South Sterling Avenue will be allowed for the project. The project's driveway design must be altered to meet this requirement. Any existing curb cuts onto South Sterling should be replaced with new curbing. And while South Sterling Avenue is classified as an arterial street by the city's thoroughfare plan and thus requires a building setback of 50 feet, the proposed building should have similar setbacks to other buildings along the street. Four, as the property of the south remains zoned R6, single family residential, a buffer yard comprised of fencing and landscaping must be provided on the south property line in accordance with section 1450307, which is the landscaping provisions of the code. And then five is the final building plans must utilize design elements common with other residential structures on the corridor. These elements may include roof forms and facade materials. Thank you, Stuart. Would the applicant please come forward? We're not. They're not here. Well, you know, they, they emailed me both the applicant and the the uh, the guy that I've been working with and said they were going to be here. So I don't know what to tell you. They plainly, because I emailed them like Friday with the staff report and the agenda, and I said, let me know that you're going to be there, and they both responded and said they were going to be here. So I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. 
we just continue it on to the next meeting. Yes. Yeah, I was going to, that was my next question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I need a motion for continuance. Oh, we're here. What? Oh, okay. We, we are not. We are the nays to the nays. So. Yeah. And we'll be out of town actually in the next couple of weeks. So. Mm -hmm. I understand. Well, we. Uh, it, we really need to have everybody here so we can continue this to uh, to a time when you folks that? will be back. I, I don't know it's that critical. Um, I mean, he should have been here, right? Is it September 10th? Is that when the next meeting is? Yeah, yeah there's, it's the 10th and the 24th. Are you back I mean, are you back? Um, well, all we can really do is, all, yeah, but all, all we can really do is, is continue it, and I'm thinking that, uh, you, I'm just, could you come, could one of you come forward, please? And I don't want to go on and on about it, but just, could you state your name? Uh, Tyler Schwope. And your address, please. 324 Southwest Rain Tree Drive, Lee Summit, Missouri. Okay. Our property is 19, or, uh, 2727 Sterling. Okay. All right. My... Oh, it's hell getting older. I'm sorry. I forgot what I was going to say. I'd suggest let's um, just say nay to the whole thing. Well, we can't. We, then we then have guys to... guys can have less to do next meeting. Well, as tempting as that is, we... Uh, <laughs> We do have things we have to do, a certain procedure. I think that, uh, is there any reason we can't continue this till September till the 24th? October or whenever? The 24th. September 24th. That's basically that a month okay? away. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to do because we just have to follow procedure. Mr. You know. Chair? Yes. Yes, sir. I move that we continue this case until the fourth Tuesday of September. I second. Okay. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Thanks Have a good for night. thanks for. Sorry, to, your time was wasted. Thank you. Yep. Was it at least entertaining? <laughs> thanks. If it pertains to business, yes, or you can. Okay, would you come to the you have to come to the, come to the here. microphone, please? It has to be recorded, so. Otherwise, it sounds like we're talking to nobody. We are owners of this other property here that he stated they bought this property they're not here at the meeting but they get preference if we had not been at the meeting would we get preference no they just would have got their way so i'm a little bit i don't understand the process all I'm asking. bring that up the next time you're here <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you folks okay we're ready for the vote apparently for continuance commissioner ferguson yes commissioner preston yes commissioner wiley yes Commissioner McLean? Yes. Chairman Ashbaugh? Yes. Case number 19-12501, rezoning of 2805 South Sterling Avenue has been continued to said date that you wrote down. <laughs> September 24th. Because I don't remember. Fourth September Tuesday 24th. of September. Okay. <laughs> the 24th. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's do approval of minutes, um, which means does anybody have any corrections to the minutes? I don't. All right. The minutes will stand approved as written. I never opened it, right? So I don't. I don't have to close it, right? No, you didn't open a public right. hearing. Just checking. <laughs> Just make sure you're on your toes, here, buddy. <laughs> um, before we go into the roundtable, or I guess this can be part of the roundtable. Um, Last meeting, uh, I went to make a motion, and uh, 
Mr. Borders there said, I can't do that. So um, I did some research um, because I don't like to be told I can't do things. <laughs> it's not you, Stuart. It's just, it's just the way I live my life. Um, and in Stuart's defense, um, it, Robert's Rules of Order, uh, you know, is written to make things run smoothly. But of course, people, anytime they get involved in anything, make it very complicated. So in a large meeting, which this is not, um, the chairman usually uh, does not, often does not vote only to break a tie and usually does not uh, allow to make uh, motions or do much of anything except run the meeting. But there's special rules for smaller um, boards like this one. And the commissioner, uh, the chairman is allowed to vote and if he's allowed, to, if he's allowed to vote, he's allowed to make a motion. So uh, I, I'm just stating that because next time I want to make a motion, I don't want to be stopped. But I do want to assure you, and if you guys have any questions or you disagree with me, that's, that's fine. We can, we can vote on it if you don't want me to do that. But the, only, uh, the motion I was going to make was, had more to do with postponing and, and running the meeting not so much me trying to gain my way of how I thought the uh, vote should be taken one way or another, because the chairman's supposed to be impartial. So having said that, um, I talked to Jordan, and he, if he wants to get up and give his two cents, then that's fine. Uh, yeah, earlier this week, the chairman and I had a nice email conversation about this, and I reached out to the city clerk, and she also um, agrees with this assessment that Robert's Rules does allow the chairman to make motions um, in a small board like yourself. So um, I'm in agreement with that. I don't think there's really any need for you guys to take a vote on it as long as you're all in agreement. I also checked the bylaws. There's nothing in your bylaws that state that the chairman can't make motions, so it seems like you're in good, good standing, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. And I do rely on you and you folks to make sure that I am as impartial as I can be. <laughs> so that's, that was just something I wanted to, to say. Speaking of protocols, Mr. Chair, I noticed instead of you swearing in the whole lot of those that would uh, testify before this commission, you did so on individual cases. What was the reason for your change? Well, we're just trying out new things. Um, it takes more time if you do it before each well, case. Yes, and it's not my intention to do that if we have a lot of folks here talking. I mean, we, we actually had a few more than I anticipated we had. But I thought perhaps you had attended the Board of Equalization <laughs> hearing and noticed that that's how they do that and that you were going to conform to the BOE as opposed to the customary and standard procedures that you've adhered to for some three plus years that I've witnessed. Well, we've got some new blood sitting over there and, and uh, actually before Charlie left, he was, he talked to me several times about maybe doing things a little differently. Uh, this introduction is a little wordy. Um, maybe it's not all necessary, but my thought was that if we have just a couple cases that sometimes folks get when you tell them at the beginning and if it goes for a while they forget and then you end up having to do what I had to do which was swear some of the other folks in because they came in late and so we're going to try a few things out if uh, I can have the forbearance of the uh, commission members I would appreciate it is that a good answer <laughs> change okay well, change hurts but you know it happens um, uh, Mr. Chairman, would you like to make a motion to that effect? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Don't tell me. <laughs> I still have my gavel. Okay. Um, <laughs> boy, I didn't know you were so sensitive. I didn't know you were. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get your little dig in there, huh? Okay. Um, Commissioner McLean talked to me, and I think it's a good idea if everybody agrees that since we're in this round table, unless somebody is pressed to go, that maybe we, uh, last meeting, we talked about uh, sharing some ideas about, um, or questions about the, uh, Airbnbs. the Airbnbs, thank you. 
and uh, I think that's probably uh, a good idea. I sat down probably about 10 times intending to email you some stuff, and I kept getting phone calls. So I think while we're here, if it would be okay with folks, if we could maybe say some of our questions so that you could have them, so you could know what we're thinking. Do I have any objections, or does somebody need to leave, or is everybody okay with that? Don't speak all at once. I, if we can, I just think that'd be helpful. I don't think we have to take a lot of time. Yeah. I just feel like if we could give you some ideas of some of the things that we're hearing, some of the thoughts we each of us had during that night, maybe it would help you come to a better understanding and help the, the um, council members also come to a better understanding of why we chose to do what we did. So. Yep, I'm, I'm okay. With yeah, that. I just, that is fine, just so people watching can hear. Um, yeah, because to, to this point, we've heard very little um, from the public. So yeah, any direction you guys can give or thoughts will be helpful, so. Okay, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll of course I'll start. I started it. <clears throat> so my initial thought was when the first gentleman was up talking, my mind suddenly went to, and not because of anything he said or anything that he did, I think that everybody here was on the up and up. Mm -hmm. I think they're already operating good, intentional Airbnbs. But my mind went to the what ifs. And does the city have any mechanisms in place to keep the worst from happening? I guess it's a mom thing, but maybe my head always goes to what's the worst thing and I have to pre prevent that worst thing from happening. So of course my mind went to, and I'll just be blunt, of what if a normal, what looks like a normal person decided to do a short-term rental but was really a bad person and would do not so good things, I guess, with that room. And so, or, you know, voyeurism, just all the things that, you know, could possibly go wrong. What as a city can we put in place to prevent those things from happening? So that's on that one side. And it could be, it could be as easy as I alluded to, which is that some component of the city goes in once a year or twice a year for an inspection. Those that are true Airbnbs or belong to the Airbnb, Airbnb um, membership are policed heavily. I mean, you, you don't want to deviate because it hits you in the money. So they are policed very heavily, but what about those people who don't belong to that organization? I don't know how strict the other organizations are, but I feel like we have to, as a city, have something in place that keeps, it protects the Airbnbs that do go vote, get voted in, because I would want to vote all of them in mm -hmm. for the most part, but what protects them and then what protects people staying there Blah, blah, blah. To take that just one step further, once, and whether it's Airbnb or some other platform, once these businesses, these short term leases, have operated for a substantial period, they have their own built in clients that are returning. And therefore, the policing that would take place by whatever platform that they're associated with is no longer applicable. Therefore, it becomes essential that there are rules and regulations to govern such activities. And we certainly should not be relying upon the marketplace to do that. Secondly, while I have a moment, my thought came to the square and those adjacent properties, which are highly sought after for business purposes. I think that the whole concept of short-term leasing, whether it's Airbnb platform or some other, is a wonderful concept to interject revenues to property owners that are operating an Airbnb. However, where there is absent owner, that is an investment owner, the unintended consequence is we could end up with every time a piece of property within a reasonable proximity to the square comes on the market, it will be gobbled up by investors and hence destroying the entire character of the area and eliminating affordable housing for bona fide residents of the city. I yield back. 
That's what I heard from. I talked to a couple of my neighbors that were here that night. Um, I live on Delaware, and one of their concerns was the vacant housing. But on the good side, what they said, because the two people that I did talk to went and looked at the ones that are on our street, and they are beautifully landscaped, well taken care of, and so they felt better about it and found that they were renting to people who were doing research at the library. And, and so that was good, but their question is, in a historic district, is, is there a good number? And I certainly don't have an answer for that. I don't have any idea what is saturation. I mean, I'd have no idea. Yeah, so, I, that was my question, was how do we control how many that we have and, and how close they are to each other and you know how many you have on a street and, and especially for the historic district is that, you know, I think, I, I think at some point it could become too much and there could be too many. And that's my biggest worry. I'm not really, I mean, I use Airbnbs and my family uses them and, and we really like them and would, you know, recommend them and have had great, great experiences with the, people that we've rented from and so I'm not as worried about who, about who people rent to because I do I do think the platforms do a pretty good job you know if you're a bad renter or a bad um, if if your rental properties are bad I mean I think those I think they get weeded out pretty quickly because of the platform just like I just like uber um, but my main worry is just just saturation because it, it's a great way to make money. So, I think that is almost a moot point. If we have these short-term leases being operated by owners, yeah, it will become an absolute problem if the short-term leases or investor operated absentee ownership mm. because it will absolutely change the character yeah. of a neighborhood. But where the number is controlled by the people living in the neighborhood and these operations are operated by owner occupants, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't foresee an issue there because they're deciding within their neighborhood the character of their neighborhood. Or at the very least, could we just say that an owner of an Airbnb must live in the city? Yeah. Is that, we, no, you don't know? We really shouldn't be having too much discussion, but I don't think there's any way the city can control where an owner lives. And just to the point about owner occupied, we're treating those as B&Bs. Right, right. And not short-term rentals. So. You know, there may be some things we can look at, but as far as regulating where an owner lives, that gets awful hard for the city to dictate. So just we can. There. Yes, we can. And there's precedence where these are operated by a non resident, non owner occupant. I know New Orleans, for instance, if that owner is not in residence, then a property must be zoned commercial. Um, that is yeah. one option, I yes. guess, because we can't allow these in, you know, currently our ordinance only deals with properties that are zoned residential. So if a home along 23rd Street is zoned commercial, they, all they need to do is get a business right. license. So, so, and again, we don't want to have a big discussion on this tonight, so I appreciate kind of your thoughts, but that's my just my initial reaction to some of those. But. Continue. We need to be very much Continue aware of unintended consequences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me let me just say something about what everybody's saying about the historic district. Um, I know sometimes historic homes can be expensive to keep up, especially if it's required because it's in a district to you know be treated a certain way. So as we go forward. What happens when um, you run across folks who have a house that they can't sell because there's no owner, there's no person that wants to own a historic house? Do we let that property just 
go into disrepair? Do we just, you know, how, and I think the historic district might need to be treated differently than just a regular residential or commercial Airbnb or bread and breakfast or what do you want to call it? Um, because that, that historic district is important to the city. So um, I'm not sure that it's always a good idea to limit it to a certain number. Now, I'm not saying that you have to limit it to a certain number, but I'm saying that maybe the process by which that happens is more rigorous than if it's just in a commercial or if it's just in a normal residential district, that they have to go through several steps and that as long as they keep their landscape up, as long as they keep the building up, as long as they do compliance, then they earn the privilege of being in there and not just, you know, well, they did a good job and they started doing a good job and then they fail. And so we have another problem. So that's my, that's my two cents for what that's worth. Okay. Because some of those, some people do a lot of stuff with their properties and some don't. And um, I think that just should be treated differently. One other comment, Mr. Chair. These short-term leases, whether we call them Airbnb or some other platform, these are de facto rooms, i.e. similar to that of a hotel. Therefore, there are health standards that we all need to be sensitive to and that we should be on the record in governing and, and therefore inspecting um, to do otherwise is to just abdicate uh, reasonable behavior. I agree, especially if you're not going to require that person to live within the city limits. Yeah, and I think that's, that's basically what I was saying too, is like the inner above Ophelia is, is inspected, and I feel good about that. I mean, and it's just a small little thing as an add-on that I feel like might just help mm -hmm. answer all my all my questions but now I've stayed in an Airbnb that was in a was in like a multi unit I mean there's a lot of folks in there and who knows how many of them are Airbnb but that's more of a commercial setting that's not necessarily a or a multi-residential setting it's not commercial but it's more commercial than it would be if it was in a single family home so <laughs> I know, I know everybody wants everything simple, but I don't know that this is not simple. Uh, it's not simple. So, and, and I know it makes it more complicated for you guys, but there's a lot of times when we try to do things simple and it always backfires. So, you know, I, I would, put, I would just suggest putting the work in and if I could help, it's fine. Not that I know a lot about it, but I'm trying to put all the burden on you guys, but somebody's got to do it. Is <laughs> it? No, but I can start working with those. I mean, I think that's helpful, and we did hear a lot of those comments the other night. So, yeah, we can start working on some answers to those or possible solutions. And we've been kind of thinking about to that inspection question some ways that we could maybe address that. So. When we come back on the 22nd of October, we should have some. I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I think we can look around and look at best yeah. practices and take the very best of the best practices and shape an independence image for that. Well, and hopefully we can look at minor tweaks that address some of these questions instead of wholesale changes. So. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be anything big. I think we just needed some legs to stand on so you guys are going to work on this and then didn't we agree that we were going to talk about it sometime? yeah i, I believe we're we going to talk about 20s. it with everybody else at the same time yeah well i mean if you guys would like us to well, i think we should do, do that i'm not saying not or, to do it i don't know if it's going to do it no <laughs> first thing. if you guys would like a presentation before that let us yes. know our pl plan after our last meeting was to come back and that be the public hearing um, so it might be a, not a bad idea to have. I think all of us need to have an understanding where we're going because it's just going to be a mess. Hmm. Okay. 
you know. Uh, and just so you know, I believe maybe next month we'll be having a study session with in front of council on this topic as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe their request was on evaluation criteria for you guys to utilize. So if you're interested in that, watch What's the study that? session. Uh, it hasn't been pinned down yet. We're thinking maybe the first study session in next month, but don't know for sure. So. Will you email me when that us? When I that will happens? email you all, yeah. so you have an, either you can watch it or you can attend. So, okay, all right, okay, okay. Did everybody happy with that? Yep. Thank all you. right. Anything else while we're here? Okay. Have a happy, safe Santa Caligon. Yay! Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, we stand adjourned at seven thirty-five p.m. <laughs> <laughs>